Salutations, respected viewers. I'm George from Ireland. I'm on King Street in London, beside Covent Garden. Um, behind me is what used to be the headquarters of the Communist Party of Great Britain. Uh, it's a rich irony that it was then sold to the Hong Kong Shanghai Banking Corporation. So um, um, very acquisitively capitalist uh, bank from a nominally communist country. Uh, so the Communist Party of Great Britain was founded just after the, uh, the First World War. And of course there was a communist government in Russia. The Soviet Union was founded shortly thereafter, 1922. And communist parties have been founded in other countries around that time, such as France, um, China, and so forth. And it really was en vogue um, amongst intellectuals. So most people who joined the Communist Party um, of uh, Great Britain were former members of the Labour Party. And indeed, there wasn't such a clear distinction between social democracy and communism back then. Uh, at, at Labour Party meetings, they occasionally displayed a bust of Lenin or the hammer and sickle flag. Um, and some of the, some of the uh, people in the Labour Party in the UK were ignorant of the fact that their um, social democratic confrères in uh, Russia were being viciously persecuted by uh, the communist government over there. And in the Russian Civil War, most social democrats were against the Bolsheviks because they recognized the Bolsheviks or communists for their cruel and dictatorial tendencies. So um, there were a few uh, communist MPs in this country. Sak uh, Sakatlava, if I got his name right, who was um, half uh, Indian, half Swedish. There was another guy, I forget his name, unfortunately, who was um, also um, of Indian um, stock. Um, Battersea was briefly a, a, a communist seat. And then Willie Gallagher, um, from one of the, the, one of the um, Scottish constituencies, he lost his seat in 1950. He's the UK's last communist MP. But uh, you know, the Communist Party was getting over 1% of the vote. And in certainly heavily industrialized uh, parts of the United Kingdom, such as like the Welsh Valleys or um, you know, Tyneside, Manchester or Birmingham, there seemed to be a serious chance of the communists getting several seats, but it, it didn't really happen. Anyway, Harry Pollitt was a, uh, the leader of the Communist Party for many years, was Secretary General to give him his proper title. So he's born in um, the uh, English Midlands, I forget where actually, to a, a blacksmith of radical opinions and, and a free thinker. They rejected religion. He avoided service in the First World War. Were you able to do so if you had if you were in a reserved occupation, as in certain factory jobs or coal mining, and uh, got involved in, in communism. Um, they had their own newspaper called The British Worker, and then a visitor to The Daily Worker, and he absolutely detested the Tory establishment and thought that a really parliamentary democracy was, was a sham because of King Bank and King Bunk, because the capitalists uh, owned the newspapers and the yellow press, so they were all trying to scare people away from socialism. There was the Zinoviev Telegram, 1924. The Labour government was in office for the first time. James Ramsey Nolan was Prime Minister, and um, he called an early election. But just before that, the MI5 got a hold of some telegram from Georgi Zinoviev, who was a communist head honcho at Moscow, head of Comintern as in Communist International, an organization dedicated to fomenting communist revolution everywhere. And it was published in the newspapers, suggesting that uh, um, the Communist Party here was going to try to use a Labour government to uh, bring about a communist revolution. Now, the Labour government said the whole thing was a hoax, but it was widely believed. It's probably is partly true. Some people say there was a genuine message, and did MI5 um, invent things, sex it up in, in a sort of a modern term from uh, the, um, the Iraq war era. And that was part of the reason why, um, why uh, Labour lost the election. I remember Kim Philby, uh, who was a, a British guy who worked for the Soviet Union as a secret agent. That was one of the things that drove him towards communism, saying that uh, people could be so easily stampeded into voting Tory by such a blatant forgery. Um, so uh, the Communist Party of Great Britain, they're very involved in the, great, the general strike of 1926, which only lasted about two weeks. And, Many newspaper printers went on, on strike. Um, and Churchill organized the British Gazette, uh, a daily newspaper to, to replace that. Many middle class people worked as bus drivers and train drivers to try and keep the wheels of industry turning. Well, it worked. Um, you know, there was a slump in the 1920s. Some people couldn't get jobs again. Lloyd George's uh, promise of, a ho of homes fit for heroes really turned out to be an empty one. And uh, some of these people who they'd risked life and limb in the First World War, they'd seen their comrades getting killed and badly wounded and they returned to live in relative poverty. So that's that. Oh God, some guy just, I know just walked by, but I can't remember his name. I think it was him. So that's why I hesitated for a second about it's some Scottish surname, it escapes me. A musical type, I knew him in Zurich. Anyway, so back to the Communist Party of uh, Great Britain. So yeah, Harry Pollitt should have been called Harry Pollitt Bureau. 
and he was an outright Stalinist, blindly loyal, often unhappy with the way he was treated um, in France when he went to visit the French Communist Party over there. So MI5, that's the Internal Security Service, they kept an, an eye on the Communist Party here. And of course, uh, they, they were helping um, anti-imperialist forces around the British Empire, particularly India, the Communist Party of Great Britain. Um, they wanted to keep Great Britain united, um, but uh, not, they didn't want Northern Ireland to be part of the UK. Not quite sure why, it didn't really seem to make sense. Um, anyway, because the Communist Party in Ireland was on an all-island basis, and the Second World War broke out and the Communist Party was anti-war. They followed the, uh, they followed the um, Moscow line of undermining the war effort. Um, so that, that annoyed many people because one of the things that had drawn some people to communism in the 30s saying, well, they only want to take a firm stand against Nazism, but then obviously in 1939 with the Ribbentrop Molotov Pact, that proved to be bogus. Um, anyway, but in 19, 1941, when the Soviet Union was attacked, the Communist Party completely changed their attitude. And the Soviets became quite popular here because of their fighting qualities and that they're the ones who really tore the guts out of the Wehrmacht. Um, uh, anyway, so that was that 1945, and you might think that communism would, would be on a high. Well, um, they, only, um, they only held one seat at the time, but you know, even Churchill got on well with Willie Gallagher, the, the only communist MP. And I remember Churchill said, if Hitler invaded hell, I would find a few kind words to say for Satan and the House of Commons. Um, so that was at the Cold War. Obviously, the Communist Party took very much the, the um, Soviet side, didn't want the UK to develop nuclear weapons, didn't object to the Soviets having them. Um, I wanted to dissolve the British Empire and wanted to really do new defences but spend more on, on, um, on welfare, as they said, ensure full employment. Uh, some of them were involved in the CND, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, which of course wasn't allowed in the Soviet Union. So uh, yeah, um, in 1956 there was the, the invasion of Hungary, a communist country which tried to moderate its communism and some people left the Communist Party in disgust over that. For example, David Aronovich's father. But there are many left-wing intellectuals or uh, you know, authors and so on, Doris Lessig, who are members of the Communist Party at one time or other. But by the 60s, really, the sheen was coming off of it. And there were other far-left groups like the Workers' Revolutionary Party um, instead. Uh, so they, they didn't really seriously consider um, uh, parliamentary politics. 997, well, by then they ceased to exist. They called themselves Democratic Left briefly. With the fall of the Soviet Union, they're no longer getting a subvention from the Soviet Union and the, the, party, uh, the party wound up and dissolved. And that was that, and the building was sold on. So there we are, that is a very brief potted history of the uh, Communist Party of, the, um, uh, of, of Great Britain. You can see footage of Harry Potter, Potter's funeral, not Harry Potter, Harry Pollitt's funeral on uh, YouTube and interviews with him and so on. I'll switch it off now.